You know, thriving as a single parent just takes a little bit of effort. It takes some time, some preparation, some planning, some recognizing that it, you have the right to take care of yourself. Self-preservation is not selfishness. It is actually your chance to become a better you, a better single parent. And some people, unfortunately, are single parents while they're even married, whether it's due to an illness, due to some challenge in the family, mental health issues, and they are single parents. So it's very important that you preserve yourself in the process. So today we're going to talk about self-preservation. We're going to continue this discussion on single parents taking care of yourself, caring about yourself, and I hope you enjoy it. Grab a cup of coffee, grab a cup of tea, grab your muffin, and join me today. So this series on thriving as a single parent. Again, like I said, we're going to talk about how you thrive as a single parent and how you do it with joy and happiness. Number one is you want to have self, want to recognize self-preservation is not selfishness. You need to take care of yourself. It's very important that you put you first before everybody else. And that does include your children. And I know many times it's very challenging to think of ourselves when we have children. Self-preservation simply means you take time for yourself. Take time to do the most important things that keep you sane and remember that you are still a human being regardless of a divorce, a breakup, or any other challenges that you might be experiencing. Number two is try not to allow your children to be unruly. And I know it can be challenging when there are difficult situations, including ones where a parent has passed away. It can be extremely difficult to manage the household. But do everything in your power to make sure your children are disciplined, well-mannered, they're doing well, they're thriving, because good manners is a large part of doing well. And I see a lot of households, especially single parents, where they're just allowing the children to just run ragged and be unruly. So do your best not to allow them to be unruly. It is possible, I did it with four, they grew up and they had very good manners and it is possible for you to do the same. Number three is you wanna place your children on a schedule. You want to have a bedtime for them, a wake-up time, a breakfast time for them. You don't want them just kind of waking up and just winging it every day. If you can sit down and have breakfast together, that is ideal. But you really want them to be on a schedule. It actually makes life a lot simpler for everybody. I know you think it's easier if you just let them just get up in the morning and just do whatever they want to do. But unfortunately, having a schedule frees up your time, frees up everybody's time, and you can plan your day. It actually works in your favor. Number four, allow time for self-reflection. Take that time just for you to decide what you want to do, what maybe didn't work out that you would like to do differently, what you are planning to do in the future, just any dreams, any goals, just kind of self-reflection. How you can make you a better you, putting yourself first, focusing on you, what I call self-preservation. Making that your goal and objective. Just having time for self-reflection, no noise. The children maybe are somewhere off reading a book or something quiet so you can take that time for yourself or you might wanna do it in the morning before everybody wakes up. Number five identify your time sabotagers like what is sabotaging your time is it you being on the phone is it checking your email is it all these other distractions that are preventing you from having good management of your time because your time is really the only thing you can control you don't have to work two three four jobs and just keep running all the time as a way almost to cope with the stress of the situation look at what is sabotaging your time identify your time sabotagers and work from there begin to decrease them not all at once because that would probably be traumatic but just little things at a time what are my time sabotagers what am i wasting time on that i could maybe do better i could have a little more discipline and this would give me the freedom to take care of myself. Number six, this is gonna be kind of a, a tough one for single parents because we do not have very good boundaries when it comes to our children. But you, on some level, you wanna detach from your children and their emotions, and they're gonna have a lot of them. And in fact, because you are the parent that is taking care of them full time, maybe you have physical custody 100% custody of the time, you are probably gonna receive the brunt of their frustration, their anger, because you're the safe parent. You're the reliable parent. You're the responsible parent. And if you're splitting up time between them, then it's totally different. But you being the one that is there for them all the time, you're gonna get the brunt of a lot of their frustration so whatever you can do detach from your children's emotions listen to what they have to say but don't allow yourself to take a lot of what they say personally move beyond what they're saying 
try to understand where they're coming from, but don't allow their emotions to um, affect you. Just detach from them and be strong. Number seven, socialize with other intact, healthy families. I know it's awkward sometimes as a single parent to go out and to want to socialize with other people, but one of the best things you can do is actually have the children socialize with intact and healthy families. It's good for everybody to see how a family can function together, how you can work through issues, work through challenges, work through problems without ending a relationship. So do your best to socialize with other intact families, whether that's in a church body, a temple, a synagogue, whatever. Somebody to help you all support you and you be a support to them as well it isn't always about you receiving but sometimes you be a giver when you're socializing with these other families as well so number seven socialize with other intact families number eight in my book 10 things I wish I knew as a single parent I talk about not working to the point of exhaustion and so this tip is going to be recognize the signs of exhaustion are you feeling fatigued? Are you more cranky? Are you not eating properly? Are you finding yourself unable to cope with many challenges? These might be signs of exhaustion. So you've got to recognize them, come up with a solution and tackle them. So recognize the signs of exhaustion and do something about it. Number nine, give yourself a pat on the back. You know, you deserve it. Regardless of the situation, give yourself a pat on the back. You are taking care of your family. You are thriving. You are doing whatever you can to improve the lifestyle of your family. So give yourself a pat on the back. Trust yourself. Don't be so hard on yourself. There's enough things and enough people being hard on you. So don't be hard on yourself. Give yourself that pat on the back. Trust yourself. And number nine, and number 10, excuse me, I know probably the hardest thing to do is just to enjoy times of solitude, times alone, times by yourself, time to enjoy just being a human being, apart from being a parent, an employee, or anything else, just having that time for yourself. That is so critical for single parents that you just have time, time alone. It doesn't mean you don't love your family or anybody else, but you've got to have time just to breathe, just to think, or to relax and take a nap have time to solitude. So we're going to recap how to thrive as a single parent. Uh, number one, self-preservation is not selfishness. Number two, don't allow your children to be unruly as much as possible if you can avoid it. Number three, place your children on a schedule. It actually frees up your time. Number four, allow time for yourself, reflection. Number five, identify your time sabotagers. Number six, detach from your children and their emotions. Number seven, socialize with other healthy, intact families. Number eight, recognize the signs of exhaustion. Number nine, love yourself and give yourself a pat on the back and smile. You deserve it. And number 10, enjoy times of solitude, time just for yourself. Thank you so much for being here today. Sonia Gallion Kamenika, soniagallioncomenika.com, and the author of 10 Things I Wish I Knew as a Single Parent, where we talk about all things single parents and help you with your finances as well. And we want to make kids safe by educating their parents. Have an amazing day.